Hello and welcome to another episode of Guard in the Glass. I'm your host, Anthony Moore. And I'm Stephen DeVos. And uh, today, our, our cigar of choice is um, a cigar that's uniquely textured and premium. Um, has like a delicious, dark, and oily tobacco uh, mixture in it from Connecticut, um, actually. And um, it's one of those medium bodied and smooth note cigars. It has a little bit of spice and uh, mocha and slightly earthy uh, type of taste to it. But um, the drink that we're pairing it with is another brown. Um, and uh, it's, it's also very, very smooth as well. Um, really don't want to put the brand out there, but uh, it's actually one of the smoothest um, whiskey. Actually, is it whiskey bourbon? Hold on one second. It is a whiskey. Let me see. Yeah, it it, it is a whiskey. It's a um, small batch whiskey, um, authentic handcrafted whiskey, uh, distilled in small batches to ensure smooth and distinctive experience. Um, 80 proof, but I'm telling you, it is the smoothest um, whiskey that I've had, like, period. But, anyway, so what's been going on with you this week, man? Um, this week, you know, busy week. Um, I'm glad we had a chance to, you know, wind down and try to, you know, get this get this segment out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just one of those weeks where you, know, you just can't wait. For it to be over, right? But you know, you you worked hard all week, yeah, and you knew you accomplished some things, but at the same time, you couldn't wait for it to be over to start a new again. You know, start a new Monday. You know, but, right? Um, so, has anything happened like like interesting or you know um, exciting or something? Something shareable at least, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, did you did you did you see any BS or whatever this week? Somebody had crazy. Well, not not so much. Oh, but you did get the second COVID shot. So let let. Well, let, well, yeah. how, how well did, you know how did that? I was I was how did that make I was trying I was I was trying to stay away from that because you know uh, I understand that people have different perceptions of COVID shot, taking it, t- don't take it. You know, and I'm not here to uh, uh, this. Uh, this way, it don't persuade anybody to yeah. take it or not to take it. However, how did it, it make you feel? The first, the, the first shot and the second shot. Okay, so the first shot I took, <laughs> um, I went. You know, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna take it because I want. You know, just like everybody else, I want to protect the people around me. I didn't particularly feel like I needed it, right. but I was like, okay, as a service to my community and the people I'm around. Thank you, know, you for your service. You know, uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, as a, as a service to the community, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to take this just to protect the people around. Yeah. So I went in, I took the shot. Almost immediately, I knew. Yeah, fucked up. Yep. Keeping it weird just went wrong. Yeah. Took the shot. <laughs> as soon as I took it, not two minutes later, I started feeling drowsy. Nauseated. Dang. You know, and to the point where you know, the, the people that gave me a shot, hey, sit here, don't leave until um, you feel better. And once they left me, the next thing I know, somebody was shaking me, telling me, hey, hey, how are you? I had went to sleep just that quick, and they wow. told me I had been there 15 minutes. Wow. So, um, you know, long story short, it took me two two weeks to get over that shot. Yeah, the first one? The first shot, it took me two weeks Jesus. to get over. So, I was like, okay, well, you know, um, maybe that was just, you know, you know how, you know, you take the first shot or something, like, okay, well, maybe that's just my reaction for that shot. Yeah. I know once you take the first one, it's best to go ahead and take the second one. Right. So, this weekend, I mean, no, this Friday, I went and took the second shot. <laughs> Second shot, hey, that was a little better at first. At first. It, it, it didn't burn going into my arm, anything like that. I didn't have any of the reaction I had for the first shot. Until, you know, um, I took it maybe at 2 o'clock that evening. Uh-huh. 
about five o'clock that evening, dog. It hit you. I felt it. I knew what the symptoms because I already experienced it for the yeah for the first. So you know, um, I don't think I'm gonna be down two weeks this time. But in my experience with this shot, I was like, you know, I'm taking this shot to avoid having symptoms. Yeah. And the, and and the side effects of the shot turns out to be worse, right? Than anything I would have ever expected from actually having the the very thing that is preventing me from getting. It. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not vaccinated, you know, and 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 I'm not anti-vax, and I'm not against it, you know. And I know people say, oh, well, you take this medicine for this and that, and you don't know what it's doing to your body. True, true enough. But my thing is that they don't even know. You know, you got to get this booster. You got to get that. You got to get that. Now there's this variant. Is that variant? Right. Um, now this variant doesn't fight against the initial shot. So you got to get this and you got to get that. Look, once y'all get it all smoothed out, to what I know that this shot that I'm taking is going to help with whatever else is out there. I'm cool with just sitting back and just waiting until y'all get everything kind of matched out. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not. I don't be around people like that anyway. I'm mostly stick to myself. You know, I'm, I'm kind of introverted. Um, so I'm not saying that I won't catch it, but I'm not putting myself in situations for me to catch it other than me possibly being at my nine to five, you know. But um, anyway, so for me this week, um, hasn't really been too, like, eventful for real. Like, I... I Went to Gunnersville um, last weekend, rented a cabin out there and just kind of chill, relax out there. Gunnersville, Alabama? Yeah, yeah, Gunnersville, Alabama, yeah. And um, I just went out there, got a got a cabin and just kind of got away from the day-to-day and the city life and, you know, didn't really do much with my phone, um, just enjoyed nature, enjoyed peace of mind and, you know, had like a little bonfire and everything out there and. Um, and when very, you say cabin, you, you're talking about one of those little tiny houses, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like this how was, was that it. anyway? I loved it. I mean, this is my second time doing that, so I'm already familiar with you know what's going on or um, how the environment is. So I I've only had good experiences. You know, I walk down to the lake area and I just sat out there for a minute. You know, listen to some music for a second and just chill by the water, man. The water for me is the most peaceful place ever. You know what I'm saying? Water, a river, just hearing the water move. You know what I'm saying? Seeing the life within the water. I mean, because I feel like water has its own life as well. And you can see how it shifts. And it's, it's just so peaceful to me. So to be out there um, secluded and have the advantage of being by the water, it was it was a good way to reset, you know. So have you ever camped as intense or you've always done the 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 glamping, I should say, uh, rather than the right. actual <laughs> Well with my church, we used to have this thing called Brothers in the Woods. Mm-hmm. And um all the men of the church and, you know, the boys or whatnot, it was it was it was a man thing. We went out, and I, I think it may have been Gunnersville. We went to Gunnersville, Alabama, um, to what, this. What was it called? Oh, it's called Brothers in the Woods. Man, if y'all had a name that Boys in the Woods, it'd have been five. <laughs> hey, that's what they call. Just playing it. off Boys in the Hood. I don't, I, I don't know where they came up with the name, but I was just excited to go. But they had this campgrounds and stuff set up out there, and you know, what I'm saying we set up tents and stuff like that. And it was and it was real camping, mm-hmm. you know, like it was nothing electric or anything like that. They had an area to where you can go take showers and stuff at, mm-hmm. you know. But other than that, I mean, we had to bring our own food, you know. what I'm saying made a campfire from scratch and um, all the other type of stuff, and um, it was cool. I enjoyed it, and I, yeah. I would I would love to do something like that now in my adult years. I just I just haven't. Right. And I guess with my thing for technology or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like I still want to have those advantages. I want to be out there in the wooded, peaceful area, but 
I don't know if how I would be without some type of some type of yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Or, mm-hmm. or you know being able to plug up a fan or you know watch some scary movies because I did have some time to watch some scary movies while I was out there right. just kind of getting that creepy nostalgia of being in the woods in the woods right. in a cabin and watching scary right. movies you know what I'm saying so right. but um I'm definitely down for it I, I mean cuz I mean I, you know I think you recently found out I'm a survivalist. Yeah, yeah. And I could not imagine going actual camping. Yeah. And being in an actual uh, domestic, you know, uh, structure like a, yeah. a cabin or something. Because I, one of these days, in my theory, one of these days, we're not going to have electricity. Mm-hmm. The internet's going to go out. You know, uh, you're going to need to know how to make your own fire. You think so? Oh, I can guarantee it. Because Mm. if anything, if anything you have ever seen over the years, technology always fails you at some point. So you said, oh, like, okay. So to piggyback off of that, remember like um, a few months ago when the internet had crashed or something Mm -hmm. like that? No, Mm -hmm. um, uh, Instagram was down. uh, Google, all of Google was down. Yeah, it was down for like, what, six hours Mm -hmm. or something? And people People lost their damn mind. mind. He was losing their mind. And I'm like, bro, you can still do stuff. That's right. But that's what and I'm it, And it was just six hours. Now, people was losing their mind for six hours. Think about it. I didn't even notice until like halfway in. I was like, okay, well, it ain't, it ain't working. Oh, well. You I know. didn't notice it until somebody told me. Yeah. You know, that's just how much I am on technology because I'm always that person that, hey, listen, like, you're going to have to. Be able to do things because there's going to come a day. Yeah, you got to know how to survive without yeah. it. Like, like, it's cool with having it, but do you, what are you going to do without, without it? it? Right. What are you going to do without it? And the only people who are going to survive that are the people who haven't been sitting around here thinking, oh, well, I just go and, I don't know, shit, order DoorDash off right, my, right, well, right. you can't order DoorDash. Right, right, well, right. Well, I will, uh. I go to my refrigerator. You ain't got no power, right? Well, I will call you. Ain't got no 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 cell towers, right? Right. You know. Well, I just turn on electricity. Ain't no electricity. So what are you gonna do when you need to catch this rainwater? Because the the, the city pump people are gonna be killing each other. That's exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna be killing each other because they don't they don't know how to survive without. Only it. thing only thing people know how to do is take. Yeah. So that's why you have to be ready because that. The survival instinct is going to kick in. It's going to do whatever it takes. They're going to do whatever it takes. So if you're already ready, because I'm going to tell you honestly, man, it's going to go one of these days. Because if you ever look at how much, how much resources and everything takes to keep it going like this. Yeah. And it's depleting. It, you, you, you only have so much of it. Yeah. You know, just like gas. The reason why they're moving to electric cars so quickly. Mm-hmm. Oil reserve is running out. It is. And my whole thing is, if people can't see that two years ago, you didn't even know what an electric car was. Right. Two years later, almost everybody is some type of hybrid of an electric car. And now all of the car dealerships are going to the point where, all right, well, in 2025, we're going to only make electric cars. You think they would be doing that, you know, uh, without something motivating them, they're yeah. motivated for the fact that hey, we can't keep yeah, going. We know, we know that in the next twenty years, we may not have no gas. And also, oh, have these, have, these have you noticed fuels. that everybody's trying to get a vehicle to go out of space right now? Mm-hmm. All right, why do you think they they're doing that? Because they know they're killing this planet. They're trying to figure out a way to get somewhere else as quickly as possible. You know. Because you, uh, 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 a few years ago, climate change, oh, yeah, no, nah, that's just made up. Now, all of a sudden, people are starting to say, oh, yeah. climate change is real, but what are we going to do to slow it down? I was like, I think we've gotten past the point of reversing it. Yeah. So now people are just, all these millionaires are find, trying to find ways to. So is, 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 it, is it climate change or climate control? No, it's, it's, cli- it's, climate, it's climate change because... At this point, um, you cannot affect the way that the, the climate is going to uh, 
be changing across the entire world. Mm-hmm. You're used to it being like this. You're used to winter, fall, spring, mm-hmm. summer. You're used to that. And now we're in about twenty five years. Snow in like in like the end of February. You, you damn right. So that's what I'm saying. Pretty soon, you know, yeah, it's gonna be a change of climate. But you it, know? Was, it was it was just seventy degrees the day before. Damn right. But see, like, and it, this is my theory. Well, I ain't gonna say theory, but like, is it is it because of climate change or climate control? Like I said, because like in Dubai a while back, it wasn't even that long ago, but. It hadn't rained for a while. Mm-hmm. And they were complaining about, I think, how hot it was or, you know what I'm saying, how much of a drought they was having when it came to um, it not having rain. But right. they made it rain. They they shot these things um, into the clouds. That could that, called seeding the clouds. Yeah, yeah. That caused it to rain. Right. So it's just like, okay, whenever you do something like that, that is artificially done, mm-hmm. it's kind of like the butterfly effect. Absolutely. It causes a chain reaction that you can't really, you, you can sort of predict up to a certain extent, but because Mother Nature is so unpredictable, it may switch and change on you just like that. So is it because, and and we don't know how many areas they've done this to, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to making it rain or, or making it snow or even causing storms and hurricanes and stuff like that, or hurricanes you know like i like to call it hurricanes there's certain words like baloney that you have to use the exact pronunciation that is bologna <laughs> not not baloney the english language is stupid man but anyway um it's, history it's certain it's certain things that we've done that has caused a chain of reaction that's like you said now is irreversible right so What's the bailout plan? Because it ain't it ain't no saving this. Right. And we're going to act like everything is under control. Until it's not. And and that's why, I don't know if you ever seen this movie called uh, Don't Look Up. Yeah, I, I just watched Man. it. Man. I just watched it. And that's exactly how it's going to go down. And and But but these movies have been depicting that for years. It's like, it's like this COVID stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a movie called Contagion back in the day mm-hmm. with um, Lawrence Fishburne mm-hmm. and the woman from Titanic. Mm-hmm. I just call it Rose. I don't know what 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 her real name is, but um, it was COVID, right? And well, so it's like some of this stuff has to have some type of truth to it in these movies, but they serve it to us in a form of entertainment to where we don't see it as being facts. What it, what they're doing is acclimating you to. Mm. They're, they're acclimating you to all of this stuff, so you can like like don't look up. People have been telling us for years that it's going to be some catastrophic. It's meteors that go by us every day and everything. So they're acclimating you to it. So every time somebody says something like that, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, it's not yeah. it's not something for you to be Don't, don't worry by. about it and because, all that. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. but think about it. If this was the first time somebody told you, if, if, if the first time President Obama had said, well, you know, there will be a catastrophic pandemic that hits in the near future. If so, that was the first time somebody had said that, yeah. you'd, have had, you, you, you'd have had a fit. Yeah. But they've been telling people stuff like this. So, so when the, when the president said, ah, oh, there he go with that again. So sometimes. And what that movie showed me, at least, is, is, is when they come out to make a public statement or in some type of press conference and they say, Oh well, it's nothing for y'all to worry about. That's when you should worry. That's exactly when you should worry. Because if it wasn't nothing for us to worry about, for me, you wouldn't even have to say it. You would you, just you wouldn't even acknowledge it, right? But you're trying to calm down the people, right? Because you know that it's gotten out of hand. Well, they're trying to calm you down and everything. So, but the thing about it is, have you noticed in that movie, all the people in power had an exit plan. Oh, yeah. They had an exit plan the whole time. Yeah. So, that's what I don't get. I'm like, y'all put y'all hands in the... And, 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 y'all put y'all lives and everything in, in the hands of these people that you know... To, even to be in those positions, you have to have a... What is it? Narcissistic personality yeah. to where you know... It's a godlike complex. Mm-hmm. To, to, to the point where 
they will do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, but nobody wants to die. Right. So it's like, if I have the capability, if I have the advantages to where I can survive, and I know that it's a limited amount of people who have these advantages or that I can save, I'm just going to have my friends and family or my close people or maybe just even myself. Right. Most of them is just it's themselves. Just them. Yeah. Just themselves. Yeah. And and you feel like you're more valuable exactly. than everybody I'm, else. Because they feel like... I'm going to tell you exactly why I think they think they're, they're more valuable than everybody else. Because by the time they get to that position and they see that they can say anything and these ignorant-ass folks will follow them or yeah. believe them, of course I would feel more valuable because I'm like, they're all followers. Yeah. They're all dumb enough to believe me, even though common sense tells them, you know, um, like Trump. Trump feels like he's valuable because he's like, I didn't even know I could just say anything. And these motherfuckers will rally behind me as if I'm motherfucking Aristotle or, or, or Nostradamus or some shit. But see, I, I, feel, I feel like Trump did know that. He probably did. He, he, he knew. But, but even if he didn't know that, he has the confidence to where... He doesn't care. Right. And and he'll say it because for one, for me, Trump is the greatest con man ever. You conned your way to become the president right. of the United States of America. Right. Look to be the greatest country on earth. And you conned your way to that. And, and you have so much debt. But somehow, you've persuaded, you swindled your way to the tippy top. Yeah. There ain't there ain't no and you're gonna be forever protected after this. Even even if you don't choose to run again. But um it, it's 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 a lot of conspiracy behind a lot of their stuff. I like to look into it or um read up on it, but I'm not gonna say I don't believe it, but some stuff I just kinda take with a grain of salt and I just live my own life accordingly. I mean, because if, if I was to just live in fear of whatever somebody said, then I probably wouldn't even choose to live my life at all, you know. But anyway, it, is there is there any uh, particular topics you want to you want to discuss today? Um, because I I got I got one. If, yeah. If, if, if no, you you, you kick it off, but let me let me think, because you uh, know <laughs> I, I I I I do a lot of controversial topics that. Kind of is my own opinion. Mm -hmm. And the thing about when with the topics of your own opinion, that's just your opinion. opinion right. And I really want to keep this to something where, okay, let's all agree on this is this. And then I'm giving your opinion of, of what you see in it. But let's start off with a baseline of, okay, we can all agree this is this. Hey, but but you know, but at the same time, I'm not in the business for everybody to agree. That's you know true. But so I, I, like, I also I also want the level to be okay. This is this. Yeah. Now, what you like? Let's just say, if, if you, whether you are you are you are a Democrat or a Republican, let's just agree this is politics. Yeah. And let's build on it from there. Right. So that's kind of like I want I want us to all start on the same foundation. It's like religion. All right, let's agree this is this. Let's let's agree we're all Christian. Now, whether you are a uh, Episcopalian or or whatever all these damn religions y'all got, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm just throwing that out there. Well, well, whatever little little remix you want to put on it, right. let's just agree on this baseline. It's all religion. Yeah, all, we're all this religion. You yeah. know, so that's kind of where I like to start. I like to start off on a baseline of hey, we could all agree this is this right here. Yeah. All right, so. This may be an old story by now, but I still wanted to get your um, opinion on it. But it said, woman reveals nightmare in being gang raped in virtual reality. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Uh, so, just so I get, just so we start off on that baseline that we're saying. She was in... A VR game or something the whole time, yeah. right? Uh huh. And she was gang raped. Gang raped. In a VR game. Yeah, in virtual reality. 
So we all agree that she was never there to actually no she physical wasn't, conf- f- she contact. She wasn't physically gang raped, but she was um, her avatar, her 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 virtual reality character was <laughs> violated by multiple individuals within the VR world or wow. environment. So, so but 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 it's like okay, I kind of saw this coming. Yeah, because yeah. you can't creeps. Right, you can't stop creeps. Right, and no 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 form of fashion. They're always and and that's just like these dating profiles and all that. You see, I I don't want, if you're gonna talk dirty or anything like that, don't come to my page. I'm like you're not gonna stop. You you're probably gonna attract more of them because right. of you having a pushback. On what you don't want, exactly. You're going to attract exactly those type of people. But it's like those creeps are probably the first ones to know how to work the system mm-hmm. in order for them to do what they enjoy or whatever they want to do. And so it says, um, a woman has spoken out about her surreal nightmare of being gang raped in virtual reality, as she noted her response to the incident felt like it had happened in real life due to the technological advances of uh, simulation. Nina Jane Patel, a psychotherapist who conducts research on the metaverse, said she was left shocked after between three or four avatars attacked her in the metaverse. Uh, The metaverse refers to 3D virtual reality, which simulates real life, containing... uh, holographic avatars and video. Mm -hmm. Uh, The term metaverse, which is now buzzword, okay, okay, whatever. Um, While the metaverse is still in its early stages, Facebook has created a metaverse, which Mark Zuckerberg, changing Facebook parent company's name to meta in a bid to, okay, their stuff ain't ain't informative. But anyway, as soon as 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 she went into the metaverse, as soon as she logged into it, pretty much, these guys surrounded her, according to the story, and violated her and was talking to her through the headset, like, you know, don't act like you don't want it and blah, blah, this and that. And it's like, you, sometimes you're given too much freedom without putting up the safety barriers. But just like on the street, if 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 these things have to happen in order for the safety mm-hmm. guidelines to be enforced, mm-hmm. if, if, if somebody dies... On this on this corner, okay. Now we should put up a, a stop sign or a, a traffic light mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's like y'all didn't see this coming. Wait, now reveals nightmare of being. So did she even? I can't believe I'm talking about this man because it's, honestly, all this stuff is made up, right? All this is actually imaginary stuff that didn't really happen, right? It happened. But it happened in virtual reality. But she said, I re- reveals nightmare of being raped in virtual well, reality. Well, it was a nightmare for her that actually uh, happened. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. God, I got a daughter. You know what I'm saying? So, I can't really dismiss stuff like this. Yeah. Because this is just one more thing I have to protect her from. Yeah. But at the same time, this is a grown woman. I'm like, couldn't you just take the headset off? I don't know. I don't know how it yeah. works because this is my first time hearing about that you could actually log in into a fucking 3D world that's called <laughs> the Meta. And you know, I mean, it, it, this shit sounds like the Matrix to me. Like, yeah, yeah, you know. But my thing about it is, it's like to stop this from happening. Only thing she had to do was take the headset off or hit the off switch, right? Yeah. So. Oh, it's just so many things. So, how long did did she go through the entire yeah. act? How, how how long were you there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. experiencing that? When and you once, know, only thing you gotta do is hit off, right? And once and once it started to happen, why didn't you just abort? Right. You know, it, it's I don't know, man. And and that that's that's my whole thing. I'm like, a lot of these people get so trapped into this social media and all that. Like the okay, this is a perfect example of how people. Let commit suicide because somebody said something to them mm-hmm. on 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 social media or something. Yeah, like cyberbullying. I never understood that either because I'm like, well, just don't go to that goddamn, don't go to that site. 
Just like this metaverse. Well, hit the off switch. I'm pretty sure that because I came up in a different generation, yeah, it's not as simple to mm-hmm. them as it is to me because they grew up with this. Yeah, I mean, know? I mean, you know, we all didn't grow up in the '60s, so <laughs> like, <laughs> so so we're we're not able to have. We don't know. <laughs> Some of us don't know how it is to live without technology and to have um, dinner by candlelight because we have no electricity. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, all of us carried lanterns, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so I grew up in the flashlight era and, and where the switches on the wall caused this light bulb to turn on and as God said, there was light. Oh, um, but I guess when you work for, cause I, I think she actually worked for the company, right, who, right, right, who was dealing in the metaverse. So when that's your job, you don't have no other choice but to involve yourself in that type of environment. But with that being your job too, I guess you would have to go through some of those experiences to know where the safety barriers that you have to put into place. I get that. But common sense also plays a role. Common sense is the one thing that we all have, you know. So when you it, it, it almost like when you say the guy said, I know you want it and all that. The moment she did, she went, if she went through that whole thing and the only thing she had to do was hit an off switch, only thing people say is, well, part of you might have wanted Might have wanted it. Right. <laughs> One of might have wanted that. Right. And now you, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like somebody who got drunk, did a whole bunch of stuff, embarrassing thing, and the next day you live to regret it. Right. You know, I'm like, yeah, but you knew what happened the moment you start drinking. You knew how you acted when you start drinking, you know. So, you know, I, I, yeah. it, it, it might be something where I say, hey, listen, I'm taking too lenient of a, 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 of a, a perspective on it. But yeah. I'm like, common sense is, is just that. I'm like, listen, man, you know, don't come complaining to me about something that happened to you. Yeah. When all you had to do just press out. Yeah, or remove yourself from the situation. Yeah. I would feel more sympathy if it was like somebody said, Hey, well, you know, um, I put I, I was in this situation, I went to this party, and I was like, I understand that because no matter what you did, nobody should have violated you. Right. I don't care how drunk you were, how much you know, high you were, how but yeah, in it, that it was, situation I mean, either way, what those guys did was still wrong. But you still could just press off. Depends on the game she was in. Well, it, it depends on the VR room she was in. Well, I mean, How do you know? What what VR game was she in? What room was she in? Well, see, uh, like, according to what I was reading and stuff like that, I don't even know if it was a game. It's just, like, a big world. Right. And so, like, everybody just kind of walks around. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? We walk around outside or we mm-hmm. walk around at the mm-hmm. mall. So, it's, it, it wasn't a particular game. It was just, she was just exploring the world right you know what i'm saying and so these guys and and i'm pretty sure they've done it before i'm sure and so I'm sure. it was it was just they picked her well I'm and just, it's and it's like okay so how did your avatar look that's exactly what you know i didn't want to say that but i'm like uh what your avatar look like was she wearing a skin suit or right. something like that was, was she, she very and I know what all women are going to say. It shouldn't matter what I'm wearing. Right. I like, was she very busty and, and, and curvy? Looking was like she, Jessica Rabbit? Was she, was she visually appealing? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To where it would entice somebody to approach you in that type of manner. You know, although at the end of the day, like I said, it was still wrong for them to do. But I know Dave Chappelle said this in one, in one of his stand-ups. Um, he was talking about women. And um, I think this man had approached this woman for sex, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Just because I'm dressed like this, mm-hmm. it don't it don't mean that I'm a hoe or blah blah mm-hmm. this and that." And I'm all for women, you know, expressing themselves, feeling sexy, and want to dress sexy. But there's also having a certain message that you're sending out with what you're wearing. Damn right. right. You know, so if you got everything all hanging out and blah blah mm-hmm. whatever, and a guy approaches you. It's not that, sometimes, it's not that you didn't want 
that attention, you just may not have wanted that attention from that guy that yeah. approached you. Yeah. Because if it was the right guy, you wouldn't mm-hmm. be all for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. going back to Dave Chappelle, he was like, he said, what if I was dressed up like a, a cop and you ran up to me? Mm-hmm. Officer, officer, I need your help. And I was like, oh, just because I'm dressed like this don't mean, you know. So, we all have to keep in mind of the message that we're sending to other people. Although, we may be comfortable with what we're wearing and how we feel in this or how we feel in that. It may send the wrong message to other right. people as we're out kind of, you know, around about or enjoying our time out at some club or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just all about being aware. Period. Well, if, if honestly, women of all people should know, you wouldn't walk down a dark alley in a damn, in some sex here. Because you know, you, you wouldn't see a group of guys in a dark alley and you walk toward them because you already know there's an element of danger there. It's like you. Why don't you go to Atlanta with them tight ass shirts you be wearing and some. <laughs> Okay. Put your hair all done and shit. Okay. And she wants some of them guys okay. hey, be approaching you. Okay. That's all I'm saying is, man. Ain't that where you from? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. So, so, so he talk about it from experience. No, you, 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 no. I do talk been about it. I have been, been approached, approached in Atlanta. Okay, okay. so what, what? You, what you do? What I did? Yeah, did, did you, did and, you, engage, did and, you, did and, you sit there and let it happen and then, and then be like, oh my God. I'm so offended that I just got gang raped. No. Uh, once I saw a couple of guys yell at me from their car, hey, hey, hey. I said, okay, I got to start being less attractive around yeah. this mug. Or you got to get in the car. Did you get in the car? Hell no, nah, I ain't getting no car. Yeah, I'm getting in the car. <laughs> or, you, or you had a choice. I'm like, hey, well, I like that or I don't like that. So what made them, because I like, what like did I you say, like that? I didn't like that at all. I don't know. I'm just saying that I'm like, and, and he, that, from a male perspective. I think you liked it because he said, you told me that he said, I know I know you want this. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know you're just playing. I mean, we could joke like that, but I knew from that point when I got to Atlanta, when I first got to Atlanta, moved to Atlanta, um, I knew from that point, because I came to Atlanta being that good looking, you know, that good looking brother, I had that. Hazel green contacts and the, and, 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 and the waves and all that. And I knew. He said hazel green contacts. Ha- okay. Yeah, yeah. I had hazel green contacts. That, you know. Well, I mean, it sounds like you look like one of them. That's exact. That's what I'm saying. You sound you, right d- you, you don't. You, when when you in a situation or you know the area you going to, sound mighty fluffy to me. Yeah, well, hey, hey, whatever. I, and and guess what? I unfluffed myself quickly once I realized you where was I was bad. at. You was a bad bitch out there, huh? Yeah, whatever, you, dog. You, you, <laughs> whatever. But but the way you talk about me dressed now, you can't even match the shoes and everything. I said, well, that came from Atlanta. I used to be the guy that hey, traumatized. Everything had to match. Yeah. Every, I couldn't walk outside unless I looked good. Yeah. Atlanta made me realize, hey, it works for men the same way. Man, don't go nowhere looking all fly and everything because you, you you have to be aware what you're going to attract. Yeah. And that's the same thing I say with women. I know it's more on a woman's perspective. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, oh, this is what women are talking about. Yeah, I, I, think, I think women do have it worse. They you know do. What I'm saying? Because there are some guys, I mean, I mean, we... Earlier, we were having this conversation off off the mic, but it's like, we're the type of guys that don't mind rejection. Like, we may approach a woman, hey, how you doing? And my thing is always respect. I've I've never been, even even in my earlier days, I've never been the, the guy to be like, hey, Charter. Um, I've, I've, I've never been that guy to be like, hey, Charter, you know what I'm saying? What's up? But, you know, I've, I've always been you the guy. You know, some women uh, respond to that. They do, but... I've been taught respect from, you know, my grandmother and my uncles and my mom and stuff like that. So, so it's like, I still approach you like, Hey, how you doing? You know, so my name is this, you know, what's your name, blah, blah, whatever, and try to strike up a conversation and ask them for that point on. Right. But if you like, okay, well, I got a dude, I'm not interested. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. You have a good one. And I'm out. Right. 
But right. some guys can't take no for an answer. However, some guys that don't take no for an answer, women, some women like that. They do. Because because I've heard them say, oh, well, it was the persistence. Right. He just he the, just the wouldn't, guy, he, right. he just wouldn't stop. Right. It just, it, you know, he just kept on pushing. Right. And I'm just like, okay, you may have found that attractive, but what type of personality does that person hold? Exactly. Or, 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 or if you say no later on with something, you just gave can him. you accept mm-hmm. that? You know what I'm saying? It, is, is he going to be able to mm-hmm. accept that? Because you already showed him that once you said no before, mm-hmm. He wasn't willing to accept that, and you were willing right. to right. fall. Well, right. I ain't gonna say fall victim to it, but you were willing to comply, right. right? Even after you said no, right? You you remember like on Fresh Prince when Jazz used to always hit on Hillary, mm-hmm. and she eventually was like, well, yeah. you know, he yeah, we can go out on a date, yeah, you know saying something like that. When you say no to a guy and he yeah. keeps persisting, you need to be well. He grew on me. He didn't grow on you. He was the same guy the whole right. time. Right. What you told him is, the longer he keeps being aggressive. Yeah. You know, that's my whole thing about women. I'm like, listen, when you say no, because you just be mean no. Yeah. Because honestly, you're just endangering other women when you give guys the, 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 the notion that, hey man, just stick around long enough. All right. So, this ain't no women bashing session, but man, we got to... Yeah. We got well, I, I just, I just told no, you about no. men, men hitting on me. Yeah, but, 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 but I'm finna, I'm finna mm. put some, <laughs> you know what I'm finna say. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's a podcast that I listened to of this guy who was talking to this girl online, and um, you know they were talking. I don't know for how long, but they had finally agreed to meet up. Right. And so he was like, um, no, she, she said, oh well. You know, I need I need my hair done and you know some my nails uh-huh. done and stuff like that. And you know, the guy was like, "All right, cool." You know what I'm saying? We'll just we'll just hit me up once you get done and we can meet up. She was like, "What?" He was like, "Yeah, just hit me up once you get done." She was like, "See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. about." Yeah, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That's what's you know, wrong y'all with men me. don't want to mm-hmm. um, uh, invest in a woman. All you want to do is he was like he was like, "Oh, so you expected me?" To get your nail, your mm-hmm. your nails and hair done, we ain't even met, right? But you expect me to get your nails and hair done, and then still take you out? Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, I'm good. And she was like, "Oh, oh, well, you ain't no real man. Real men do this. Real man, look, man. If that's what it's gonna take to get a woman nowadays, I, I'm, I'm just not. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I'm not it. <laughs> I'm not it because I'm." You got to have something to bring to the table, too. Right. You know, and if you're expecting right off the jump for me to just shower you with this or buy you this or buy you that, you're not really wanting me for me. You're wanting me for what I can do for you. for you. Absolutely. And what if I had done all of that? Right. And not saying that sex should be the repayment or it's, it's something that I deserve after I've done that. But at the same time... You don't want to put out at the end of the day? No. Oh, okay. What, what no, you, oh, oh, what make you know, what makes you think that you deserve all of this and you ain't done nothing? I just took you out. I just got your nails and your hair done. I'm not saying that I'm entitled to it, but you haven't given anything. Which is why prostitution will never die. Because some women would just tell you, hey, for $100, you can get it. It's transactional. You, 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 you don't have to take me out. You don't have to do this. You don't got to do that. Look, just give me $100, and you can get it. This is a business transaction. Yeah. Which is exactly, I told you about the girl I told you, had her cash out on this body type uh, 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 shirt one, one <laughs> with her cash out on it. I never I, heard of that. I can guarantee you that girl got more People just sending her money. Sending her random money. Sending her random money with their phone number yeah. or whatever. And I was like, you know. And she ain't calling that nail guy. Now. She just backing up. They probably send her 20 to $50 with their number and everything. She ain't never gone. Honestly, now that I think about it, I need to have my girl. <laughs> I, need, I need to walk around with my cash app. Now that you think about it. Just to see, hey. That may be a good business strategy. It's a, and, and that's how 
That's how women. You, you know, can't even be mad at that. You, because, you can't because it's she it's never asked you fault. for a damn thing. Right. It's the now in the, in that case, it's the guy's fault for falling into it. All she did was throw the trap out there yep. or throw the bait out there. Yep. You bit. Yep. You bit. You, you bit. bit. And and that's my thing. I'm like, you know, honestly, you can't be mad at. I was like, when I looked at, it, I was like, you know, first I was like, look at this, and then I, and for a second I was like, you know what? She, that shit is genius. Yeah, it is. It's it's genius, right? Because you yeah. know she's making money because she would. I know it's one thing about what women would do. They don't they don't keep doing shit if it that, doesn't work. If it doesn't work, mm-hmm. like the lady you said that 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 they, I met the guy online. She's like, see, that's what that's what why why that's my that's what I'm talking about. Men, they don't want to invest in a woman and all that. I'm like, that's worked on several guys. It has. And then, and then, even if it didn't work at first, mm-hmm. by her mm-hmm. saying, "Oh, well, this was wrong with guys. Y'all don't want to invest." Mm-hmm. Oh, oh no, I wouldn't to invest. Mm-hmm. What you need, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I ain't no simp, man. Like I'm, nope. not, I'm not about to do all that stuff. Nope. I don't mind treating my woman. I don't mind taking her out. I don't even mind getting her hair and, and nails done. But you also have to be giving me something, and it's not even about the sex, you know. Are you cooking for me sometimes? Are you you cleaning for me? And not even saying cooking and cleaning is something that, that a woman is supposed to do, but it has to be transactional. You give, I give. It's teamwork. You know, so I don't mind doing these things for you, but what are you doing for me too? Yeah, but especially in the social media age. And I'm you not got, leaving you with got that. Instagram models out here getting rich by just putting their pictures online. And I'm yeah. like, if it's that easy, and they're and they're models now, right, right. You know, I mean, I, it used to be a hard struggle for somebody to be a model. Yeah. Now it's just, hey, you know what? I just put my picture online, and yeah. I'm and I'm sitting up here like, I don't blame them for no, doing it. No, I can't. I can't. You using what you got to profit off of, right? You know what I'm saying? My only issue is 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 when you expect. When you approach the guy like you like like that girl did, right, and expect the guy to do all of this type of stuff, and you want to try to attack his manhood and saying that, oh well, you ain't no real man if you don't do this and you don't do that. Okay, so why can't you provide that for yourself? A real man wouldn't listen to something like that, right? A real uh, uh, and honestly, honestly, the guy when he said, "Hey, well, all right, well, when you're done, hit me up," you know. Yeah. The moment she came back with, well, that's what I'm talking about. That'd have been in a conversation with me. Yeah. It, it would have been. I, I've had several women that mm-hmm. it's always. Why aren't you answering me anymore? Anything? You already showed me what? who you are. Mm-hmm. I've already blocked you. So no matter how much you keep coming back with this, right. you're talking to an empty space because once I already know who you are. You might be a great person to somebody else, right? Right, and and that's and that's it right there. It's like just because I'm not feeling it, right, don't mean that it doesn't work for somebody else. Somebody else, it's just not for me, right? So you know what I'm saying? You you keep trying, and that and that's and that's same thing for women. It's like okay, if I approach you and I want to, you know, say talk to you or you know, I'm saying hang out with you or get to know you, and you're not impressed or I'm not what you're looking for. Okay, cool. Not saying that I'm not able to find anybody. I'm I'm just not right for you. Right. All right, cool. So I'm going a, I'm to a keep going on with my business. And you'd be surprised how many people, they strike out with one one woman. And they die. And then, you know, and well, a, you know. Nobody loves me. And, or, and, and, or, and, or they start dating somebody from a different race like, oh, well, you know what? Well, this one, y'all women didn't love me, but I can like like you know. Let's just let's just say black men, white women. Okay. Oh well, black women always did me wrong. No, black women didn't do you wrong. Right. It's, it's just that one woman. It's just that one woman. So you went and changed your whole life around because one yeah. or two women yeah. didn't like you. Which then women didn't want to like you no matter Either way. what color you were. Either way. You know. And you just so happened to that. White woman liked you. Right. Or, or, or that right. one white woman liked you. Yeah. But but you could have approached two or three other white women 
and, and they, they could have gave you the same rejection. The same damn and, thing. And, exactly. So it's like that's my thing. It's, it's like if if I have a bad experience with a black woman or a white woman, that's not generalized to all women or 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 that woman of that particular race. It's just that one that person. That one person. What feeling me? All right, cool. Well, I see you later. Have a good one. Be safe. I mean, and, and the thing, and think and, about. Sometimes you have to know yourself. If you're a blunt person, yeah, and you don't beat around the bush, yeah. Women, a lot of women aren't gonna gonna um, a lot of women aren't a, a lot of women who have this imagination of what guys are mm-hmm. are not gonna like you because they're like, yeah. well, you know, um, this isn't what I was looking for. This isn't what I was looking for, or, or you're too blunt, or you're too straightforward for me, and all that. And my whole thing is, well, that might be what you want from a man, right? You just don't want it right now. You want the, the sugar coated version. You want his representative until. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's that. What you see right now mm. is what you get. But yeah. see, people don't want people. A lot of people don't want uh, straight no chaser at mm. first. No, just kind of mix it with some first. Yeah, let me, put some salt around. You know, yeah, yeah. Some let me lick <laughs> off some and and, and, right. and, and and you know kill it a little bit. Yeah. Me, you know, instead, but that's the thing. It's like when you're a very blunt person, you shouldn't yeah. expect to be a lot of people to want you because not a people. A lot of people aren't accustomed to hearing the straight, right. honest truth until. Oh, well, when I first met you, you weren't acting like yeah. that. I hear a lot of married couples or people who've been in a relationship, but he wasn't like it. He used to give me flowers and everything and all that. I was like, yeah, because he was lying to you. And 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 I wouldn't necessarily, you know, necessarily say that people are lying to somebody in the beginning whenever they start with flowers. But it's just like new things get old. And it's like, okay, yeah, I used to do the flower thing. And over time... People get complacent and they and they get settled and they don't think that they have to work as hard to make the relationship, you know, still work or or to, or, or to still blossom. But but it's like, what are we doing within that relationship to keep the spark going? But on another note, um, I found that some women, after you be honest with them about it, like. If I was to approach somebody, they say that they didn't want me or, you know what I'm saying, I'm not what they're looking for. And I say, okay, you know, fine. And I walk off. They're more confused. Mm-hmm. And when they actually chase you down, like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. So that's it. I'm like, yeah. I mean, you said you were cool. So, I mean, I'm about to call my business. Oh, so you're not finna print? No. Well, you know, how about, how about you hit me up later on? Like, they're more enticed by that because they're used to men chasing. Yep. And so that's something else that we have to hold the men accountable for. Sometimes I feel because some women want that chase or want, not saying that it has to be easy, but it's like, why do I have to go through all of this stuff? Because yeah. And and that's the thing. It's like, if you show them if you show people something different than they used to, that's what entices them. Now, yeah. it could be a hundred other guys lined up or a hundred other women lined up to give them exactly what they expect. And they don't want that. Yeah. They want the unexpected. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just people in general. I'm like, why would you, you know what you want, but you'll take the unexpected every time. Yeah. Something the unknown every time rather than exactly what you want. You know, yeah. you're uh, if you're an above average woman, I got a hundred guys over here who want me every day. I guarantee you, they're gonna take that one guy that wants to sit on the couch and yeah. play PlayStation all day long. <laughs> but then, but then, complain to their homegirls about how oh, this this guy won't do nothing. He want this and that. Yeah. This and that. But you still taking care of him. Now, is it is it the is it the mother within them? Is it is it is it the the want to change them into? It's the want to. I think I can change it. But once you do, or if you do change them, then you ain't gonna want them anymore. Not will you want them anymore? But 
are they going to up and leave you for somebody else that is that is now of their caliber? Every time they 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 they, they upgrade them and wonder why you spent all this time upgrading me. And that guy was like, "Well, now I was chilling over here." Now I'm gonna take all this stuff you done learned. I, I done learned from you, and you yeah. done upgraded me mm-hmm. and give it to somebody else. That's why you and do just that. like it's like Kanye said in that Gold Digger song. Yeah. Um. Um. You know, and when and when he get on, he leave your ass for a white girl. girl. Yeah. And it's like you've been with this guy through everything. You held him down. You believed in his dream. You were with him through the trenches. And then now when he got on. He leave you for somebody else. The whole basis and, and, of, and of, of, of waiting to excel. And, speak, and speaking of Kanye, when Kanye first got into the game, he did have an old lady. Yeah. He did have a girlfriend. Absolutely. And then after a while, she disappeared. His options opened up. Right. And that's what I'm saying about the guy sitting on the couch. Yeah. So once he, she upgraded him, yeah. his options, he had more options. Yeah. yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. well, now yeah. I'm getting I'm getting pressed by this chick that looks ten times better than you, yeah. to where I knew this person was out of my league. First of all, I knew you were out of my league too, but I just kind of shot for it, right? And now, bam! However, that one that was with him first was there with him when he got in the car accident. Yeah, yeah. She was there with him, nursing that. him with all this, nursing out with all that. But then. When he got something, the first thing he did, that's why you can't shower anybody with a lot of things unless they contributed. Now, I understand, like, I understand when people built something together. Yeah. They usually stay together. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, okay. So, like you were telling me last night um, about about the woman, the um, the husband was, was he a cop or something like that? Um, it's It's a black couple. To where he... Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. That, that, that she got her movie deal and everything, all her movie deals together, and then she, her husband was a cop, and she's yeah. like, he'll never work again. He yeah. doesn't have to work anymore. Women, women drugged, mm-hmm. drug her. Was like, mm-hmm. oh, mm-hmm. you making that man not work and this and that, this and mm-hmm. that. And she came out and was like, look, look, I ain't got to give y'all no explanation, but I'm finna stand up for my man. Right. He paid for it. Me to do all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. He busts his tail while 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 I was in school doing all of this type of stuff. And now that I've made it to where he financially took care of everything, now I can repay him right. by him not having to work anymore. And I'm doing what I love to do, so it's not a job for me. And right. this is a team. Well, we not, work as a team. Not only that, she was like, not only did he uh, provide for me, he provided for me doing one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Exactly. And, and and I was scared for him every night. So, of course, he doesn't have to do that, get that dangerous anymore. And she made a very eloquent case for not doing it, but she shouldn't have had to. She shouldn't have had to. But, but, but black, uh, but, but I'm, I wouldn't say black, just black women. But women said, Oh, 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 you just taking care of a man. You should never take care of a man. I'm like, yeah, but you, what, 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 what people tend to forget, that man took care of her first. Exactly. And, and, and that's my thing about it. It's like teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. We, I'm cool with having more responsibility as a man because I feel like men should have more responsibility. But at the same time, there still has to be something that you're contributing in the long run. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to be doing 100% of the work and you're just reaping the benefits. Because as soon as I don't have it anymore or as soon as I can't, you're going to move on to the next guy who can. So it's like, who's going to have my back when I fall? Or if I fall? You know, and um, just like that story I was telling you about, um, the the couple who had met online and... Um, they were right. meeting up for the first time, and she had, um, she, he had uh, told her how he liked cigars and stuff. He, ne- he never, he never asked her to buy anything. Right, right. They right. were just getting to know each other. Oh, the couple that she went to her father. Right, got, right, 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 right. And so within the conversation, she actually listened and heard him talk about his interests, mm-hmm. and 
she got him a gift. She didn't even pay for it. She knew that her dad liked cigars. She went to her parents' house, told her dad, you know, everything about, you know what I'm saying, I met this guy, you know, he likes cigars. Can I get one of your cigars to give to him? He gave her one and threw in a cigar cutter. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's also a difference too, man, that I've realized sometimes when it comes to women who have their fathers in their in their, in That's their lives. That's exactly right. Um, who's who's a positive influence and actually shows you what a man's supposed to be, mm-hmm. what they do, and what it what a real man looks like. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, she got the cigar and a cigar cutter from her dad, and she was just gonna give it to him just like that. Her mom chimed in and was like, "Man, you can't just give right, just give it to him." Right. So she helped her. The mom helped her wrap it up and. You know, some type of little paper or whatnot. And so when they met up, she presented him with the gift. Mm-hmm. Women drugger. Yeah. Oh, 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 you you doing too much. Mm-hmm. You know, you're giving this guy a gift. You know what I'm saying? You're paying for this guy a gift. She didn't even pay for it. Right. They right. ain't spent one dime. But you don't tell the rest of the story of that next week or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. He frequent this, this um, vinyl or record store. And he was listening to her as well right. that she liked vinyl. Right. He took her to the store and had her pick out a few vinyls for her collection. So it was it was it was a back and forth right. of it of, of, right. of exchange. Right. He never asked her for the cigar. Right. He thanked her and was appreciative right. enough to show his appreciation right. by gifting her right. the stuff that she liked. Right. Teamwork. But you want everything to be one-sided. Well, the one thing I took from that story is it's all the environment of how people grew up. Now, if she grew up in an environment where her mom was always telling men ain't no good, don't give a man nothing, don't do anything, right. that's exactly what she would took. But she went to a, grew up in an environment where her mom and her dad, hey, sweetheart, you know, this is, your, this is what your dad, your dad has been here. And, and this and all that. And so she took a cue. Hey, Dad, I'm going to meet this guy. He says he likes cigar. The first thing her dad did was, okay, well, if he likes cigar, maybe maybe he'll like this one and here's the cigar cutter. Her mom said, hey, look, you can't just give a man this. You can't present somebody yeah. with a grip, gift all willy-nilly. Put it in a, in a presentation. Yeah. That's the environment she grew up. That's right. how. That's why she went to her parents in the right. first place. Right, and she knew, And she knew how to approach that man. Right. When right. it came to trying to build and create right. something, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Let me let me let me play this video real quick. Right. I'm, I'm I'm hoping that it's the right video. Is a woman talking about it? TikTok user Samara Curtis, who is now known as Cigar Babe, wanted to make a lasting first impression with a guy she knew for only two days. During an initial conversation, Samara picked up on the fact that her date loved cigars, so she decided to gift him one. On their first date, but social media was not having it, and many said she was doing way too much. Did Danny say she rolled up with Cohibas? Jenna said it was like was, yeah. fancy. I know, I didn't understand. I was like, it's just a cigar. It's a cigar. Right. It just feels like she's trying to buy him off. Oh, yeah. Oh, with a $20 cigar. Yeah. Right. Something that wasn't expensive. It, it wouldn't be $20. Who knows? It could be expensive. Right, because our daddy gave it to him. Let me, let me Let me find the one to wear. This woman was going in about it, talking about some, trying to break it down, um, you know, saying, oh, well, she's doing this and she's doing that. And this is what this means or this is what that means, blah, blah, whatever. And it's like, no, man, it's not that, it's not that deep. Like, you're going too deep into it and it's not even that big of a deal. But that's the thing. It's kind of like. All right. So I finally found a video. We'll talk about it. Hey guys, so I'm going to give you guys a quick little tip on how to make a first impression last. Uh-huh. Okay, so I've been talking to someone for literally like two days now. We decided to have our first meetup, link, date, whatever you want to call it. And just through our conversation, I know for a fact he is an avid cigar smoker. He enjoys a cigar over a glass of brandy or whiskey. I can't remember which one. I think it was whiskey. But um, I picked up on that little mental note. And I remember that my dad's an avid cigar smoker. He has a really nice collection. 
connection. So before getting on the road for our date today, I decided to stop at my parents' house and actually pick up a cigar. And my dad actually threw in a cigar cutter. And my mom, being the mom that she is, was like, oh my God, this Mary can't take it just like that. And he had a cigar and a cutter and wrap it. And I'm like, well, what do I have to wrap it with? Her crafty self has been twined in a paper bag. So I wrapped the cigar in literally a paper bag. I folded it up and some twine. And I really hope this is good for inspiration. Okay. All right, so I'm 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 playing this video off of um uh Kev on stage. Shout out to uh Kev Kevin Fredericks and um uh Angel um on their Here's the Thing podcast. Anyway, I'm playing this from their podcast because I can't find the actual videos of them talking about it. So y'all just bear with me while I'm trying to like scroll through so y'all can hear exactly what the story is. Okay, well. I can't find a part to where they talked about the other girl who had pretty much started dragging her for, hold on, here we go. The same thing went very well. The one where she bought him a cigar and then wrapped it up and his dad gave him the cigar cutter and all this other stuff. But did you catch the part where he admitted that he was a narcissist? Did you catch the signs that the all of them already is a narcissist? And she says that the day went well, and then he says, yes, I'm really impressed, like nobody's ever done this, and that really sets you apart. That is a classic narcissist phrase, Whoa. because what narcissists do is they keep you auditioning and performing for them, constantly trying to earn their approval of you so that they don't have to show up and earn them, so that you don't really see the dark stuff, the things that are wrong with them. So, I am willing to bet that for this beautiful young lady, and I'm not saying there's something wrong with her, I'm saying that she has a pattern, but I'm willing to bet that he would be the first narcissist she's been in a relationship with. Hopefully it doesn't work out. So, with the man saying that he's impressed by something, and this is the first time somebody have ever done this for him, that's him being a narcissist? Well, you know, of course you're always going to get a, a, a hater. On anything that you use. And the girl that was talking sound like this coming from a hurt place. Right. Absolutely. Somebody's hurt you before. Absolutely. Because you refuse to say anything bad about the woman. Right. Right. It was all right. about about the man. So you're right. into man bashing. Absolutely. Okay. Continue with what you were saying. Absolutely. Bad. Well, you, you're always going to get a hater. And, and I expect that on social media at any point. You're always going to get somebody whether, you know... Behind social media, you can always get somebody to say something like, if you say up, they're going to say down. Right. You know, if you say left, they're going to say right. You know, no matter what it is. However, with this particular woman, I can see you're right. She's been hurt and everything, and she don't want to see any other woman happy, but she's going to make her excuses if she's trying to protect them. Right. She's trying, oh, well, girl, listen. I know he seems okay, or or I know he seems nice, right? You know, because I I grew up with that. I heard, I used to always hear, "Girl, don't you ever trust a man farther than you can throw him." That's but, all I ever heard. But it be it be the women who always are single. It's, who can never keep a man. It, it, it could never but keep you, a man. But you always you want a man, but you can't keep one. Mm-hmm. And the reason why that is, and I've always said that. I've always said this. I was like, you know, there's a reason you're bashing somebody else's man. And that reason could be several. But I've always said, it's something about you that if you're not happy, you don't want nobody else happy at nobody all else anyway. Right. You know, now I, I know a lot of people say, well, if you ever see a woman bashing your man and everything, secretly, she they probably trying to want your man. Mm -hmm. But see, women... Don't see it like that. Women say, well, no, nah, she's my girlfriend. She's just trying to protect me from being, because she knows my pain. She knows how I've been hurt in the past. Until, until she start pressing up on your man. Yep. And, and it's, oh, I never could. I, I should have never trusted her and all that. I'm like, well, you know, which is it? Was she your girlfriend that was just trying to hurt you? Yeah, because that was, was your just sister last week. You? Or was it you should have never trusted her? Yeah, and 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 that's and that's my thing is that you only take this this one portion of the story because you didn't get into the fact that later on he bought her her vinyls. 
But you started off by saying that he bought her a cigar, but then say that she got the cigar from her dad. Okay, so which one is it? Right, right. Well, because well, because you're contradicting yourself within within that same statement, within that same breath. And then on top of that, if this is the first time somebody has done this for me, it's the first time somebody's done this for me. What was he supposed to say? If 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 I'm impressed, if I'm shocked, if 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 this is the first time, I'm gonna let you know. Like, dang, I, I and nobody ever done this for me. Right. Well, what, what, what else was he supposed? That's my whole thing. What else was he supposed to say? Right. Was he supposed to say, um, well, um. I don't even know what else you're supposed to do. That's the only thing but, you can say. But that's the thing about it is that it didn't matter what he said. Right. She because was going to find something exactly, wrong with it. Exactly. It didn't matter what he said because whatever he would have said, she would have taken it and flipped it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping that the girl who actually did that gesture, the girl who actually gifted him, and then he gifted her, they didn't allow social media to come in between what they were trying to build. Because I didn't see anything wrong with what she did. And he reciprocated the gift exchange later on. But that part with, with, with that woman, at least, wasn't acknowledged. Well, you know, it shouldn't have had to be. It, it shouldn't even been a story. It's like, it should have been a feel-good story that somebody took and made it, it something other than that. It was, it was, it was a happy dating story right. that, hey... Not everybody on these dating apps are creeps or, you know, I really found somebody that I'm interested in and, and this is how it went. It was it was it was a feel good story. Absolutely. But but somebody's always going to take something and flip it into a different narrative based off of their own feelings. And, and speaking of dating apps, I've realized that all these horror stories and everybody that 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 that. Um, Oh, but I don't go on dating apps because of this. I'm like, you know, dating apps are just like anything else. And anytime somebody tells you they didn't have a good experience on it, I keep wondering, what was your part in that? Yeah. Well, were you just on there trying to find somebody who would get you what you want? Or was it, or, or, or was it you were on there trying to use somebody? Or, or were you on there trying to find, um, I don't know, um, somebody uh, uh, as so attractive that, I, right. I don't know. But what was, the, you know. What was your agenda? Right. What was your agenda on this app? And then you'll right. see why it didn't work out. Right. right. Because honestly, I've known plenty of people who, hey, I met her on this app, you know, and we worked out. Well, why was the app so good for you? It's because honestly, man, you know, I work all day. I don't have time to go out. Right. And, and, and go to clubs or go to bars. I, I'm tired when I get home, but I can always get on this dating app throughout right. the day. And 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 I've I've seen more so, especially because I'm like that, that there's a lot more introverted people right. out here who don't like right. to go to those type of places. Mm-hmm. It's like we want somebody to be intimate with or we want somebody to engage with, but we don't really go anywhere. Right. For that type of engagement, you know, and so these dating apps or these other ways to meet individuals are more convenient for us. You know what I'm saying? But and 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 I'm not an advocate on on I haven't really used dating apps like that, but I can I can understand and I can see the convenience when it comes to the dating apps. It's very you know, convenient. But it, it's it's one of those things to where as much as you like to share your glory story or your hopeful and 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 you know happy ending story, it's going to be somebody who, just like you said, is going to hate right. on yeah. on mm-hmm. the outcome of your experience. Absolutely. To where it's like, man, is it even worth trying to put it out to try to give people inspiration to be like, hey. You can find love. You can find a connection. You can find a partner or even a friend through these other avenues. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. For me, it's like, you know, we're, we're, at a, we're at a point where, like I say, no matter how 
good things are going for you or how positive you are, you're always going to find that person. Yeah. It's always going to be the yin and yang. Yeah. You, you always, you always going to have that. So my thing is, it's like, you know, if you can choose to ignore that and still be yourself, you'll be fine. Yeah. But the following people, the people who are followers are the ones who, well, as soon as somebody said, you know, well, this doesn't work for me. They don't work and all that. It's like reading reviews about places. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can read a hundred different, you can read a hundred good reviews. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you see that person say, this place, that food is horrible and all that. Yeah. Well, I heard that place, the food is horrible. You forgot about all these other reviews that said this place is fine. And that one person could have, the food could have been great, but the fact that that server didn't come around for, uh-huh. you know, five or ten minutes because mm-hmm. they work in ten other tables. Mm-hmm. Now you want to get, you know, mm-hmm. upset. Or, or they got your order wrong. Mm-hmm. That you know, what I'm saying one time, but mm-hmm. you didn't get enough napkins. All it takes is 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 for that one imperfection mm-hmm. for that person to now slander mm-hmm. the whole entire thing. And right. there are some people who just like they say in it in it in the Batman movie about Joker. Some people just want to see the world burn. That's it. That's it. And and and, and, and no matter what it is about it, they always they they're always going to see the negative in it. And for me, I'm like, you know, as long as you know that. Yeah, you can live your life great. Yeah, but you got to be mindful of 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 once you put out something. Now it's public information, and you have to be prepared for what people are going to say about it because it's not always going to be sunshine and palm trees. Which is why you have to have a thick skin right. when you when you get on um, media in the first place, social media or anything, right? Where you can get feedback, right? And and and, and I mean, just like this podcast, I'm pretty sure. Somebody's not gonna like whatever we say. Oh, uh, of course. And it's like, of course. It's like, it's like Dave Chappelle said, "You clicked on my face. Yeah. You chose to continue to listen. Yeah. So, yeah. it's it's a lot of what <laughs> is in this podcast. I'm not saying it's not facts. Some of the stuff isn't isn't facts, but it's more so feelings, and we're and we're just having a conversation. So, and a lot of this stuff too is rooted behind. Jokes and entertainment. Absolutely. But it's like, you'll take this one segment and just... And, and, and pick it apart. And try, to, and try to set somebody on fire. Right. 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 But, uh, yeah, I, I I think we can go on and on about the conversation. Uh-huh. But uh, I think I think we should, we should end yeah. it here. Yeah. Pick it up later on, on the next yeah. episode. Yeah. So, so you got, got any... any, any motivational thought to end it? All that I can say is that practice makes progress. There's no such thing as perfection. If you're looking for perfection, that'll be something that you would never achieve. Just continue to progress. And when it comes to that, take it on a daily basis. Um, Learn to celebrate yourself with the little things. Um, If you make it to work on time, if you if you get up on time with your first alarm or if 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 you've even chose to brush your teeth that day, you know, we look at accomplishments as being these big things that has to happen in order for us to give ourselves a pat on the back or, you know, a sense of achievement. But it doesn't always have to be that. Because sometimes those things come very far apart, but we should celebrate ourselves on a, on a, on a daily basis and that'll continue to give us motivation to achieve and do more and continue to be great. So, um, practice progression and continue to listen to yourself and not other people. Um, there's a reason why social media is constructed the way that it is when it comes to the following and followers. Choose which one that you choose to be. You know, choose which one that you want to be. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, it is your choice. So, with that being said, I'm Anthony Moore. I'm Steve Gross. And this has been another episode of Garden of Glass. Appreciate y'all listening. We thank you for your support. Much love. Be safe.